I just say that the purpose of the, this is to begin our budget process. It seems like it's really early to begin our budget process because we don't get it until March. But um, hopefully by having some of these meetings as we move along, we can make this budget process go a little bit more smoothly. And so with that, um, Mr. Marshall, if you want to start with the survey? Start. Okay. What I'd like to do is instead of starting with the survey, is start with the budget process. Yeah, and because the survey really is a tool for prioritizing the objectives. So let's we'll start with recall two years ago we took the seven focus areas that the mayor administration had developed and combined them with the strategic goals of the council. The council had four strategic goals. One was negative vitality, the second was educational achievement, the third was economic and business opportunities. And the fourth was Prosperity Hall. And what we did was combine those with the seven parties, seven focus areas, and show the relationship between them. So for example, neighborhood vitality is tied to unique health and inclusive communities and neighborhoods and community safety and well-being. Uh, economic and business, the business opportunities are tied to sustainability, economic growth, transportation. And prosperity for all and well-managed government undergird the entire uh, process. Because that's the way we see it. So what we want to do today is we want to talk about or try to achieve consensus on a process for jointly setting and prioritizing strategic policy objectives for both the city and Richmond Public Schools budgets. And that would include the General Fund OM, the uh, General Fund CIP, and the Enterprise Fund budgets. And then I guess under your section, you begin, you begin talking about the process for determining your process as well as determining your, your policy objectives. Mm -hmm. We will also, uh, as part of our presentation, talk about uh, or at least give you an overview of the key findings of the results of the citizen dissatisfaction survey and show how that's being incorporated into the budget process. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. What I'll do is take you through the budget strategic planning and budget development process. And for your reference from your book, it's tab three and it will also be projected here on the screen. As a matter of overview, the strategic planning and budget process really involves a lot of other processes. They integrate to make up the budget process. So the budget development process actually received data and input from some of these other processes. And we're talking about the strategic plan, our balanced scorecard process, as well as input from you, the council, the mayor, the CAO, the citizens, um, and other stakeholders. All of this information comes together for a comprehensive financial planning process. So if you look at the diagram and look in the center, as you can see, the elements in the diagram show that first, of course, you have to develop, and that means you have to have a vision, some strategy. That connects to the strategic plan and, of course, your priorities. That's where you see that. There is in-depth communication through the process if you're going to have a successful development process. And so you'll see a lot of stakeholders meetings, a lot of meetings with you all, as well as staff and other stakeholders. It's a continuous process. So we implement and ultimately what we're trying to get to is a service level budget that clearly defines the work that we're going to do and the resources that are necessary to do that work. And of course we want to evaluate that. 
want to make sure that you're putting resources and we're getting results. And so that's the cycle of the process. So what we will do now is take you through each of the months of the calendar year to help you see which parts, which activities are taking place to help us to achieve a successful process. Uh, you will notice if you go back just for one, right? You will notice that it's color coded. So the things that are documented in black are things that are happening in the current year. The things that are in green, they're future years out. The blue is council activities, and the purple denotes things that are happening with Richmond Public Schools because all of those things need to tie together. That will take us to our first month. We deem June as a starting process of this cycle. And you will see many places where you are in the process. So moving toward our service level budget, the departments are documenting their services and they're identifying mandates for provision of these services. And this year we asked our legal department, after our departments have actually identified their services, to go through those services and to validate which ones were mandatory or mandated. And so that has happened already. Um, and so now we are categorizing, reviewing, and prioritizing the services. And that's what's happening in the month of June. If we look now to the month of July, while we have started the new fiscal year, we're closing out the previous fiscal year and finalizing our documents like the cap. We gave you the fourth quarter report, but you also know that's not the final data. So we're working on that at this time. Um, the city attorney's office also, when we gave them our services, they were about 400. We have refined that down to about 200, 225 at this time. We are also beginning to review and to refine our citywide strategies. And so as we refine this process, you may want to consider realigning your committee structure to the strategic focus area. Some of them are already pretty closely aligned. For example, when you look at the focus area called economic growth and well-managed government, that's aligned to the council's financial and economic development committee. And if you look at council's education committee, it aligns with the focus area on education and workforce development, which you may want to look at aligning the others. Other localities. One thing I want to point out, I'm just going to talk about the fact that we had a catalog of all the services in the city. We had every department to tell us everything they did, and we actually asked what was the mandate for doing that, and the city attorney checked that. We started with 400 services, and determined that some of them were in different departments. We got down to about 225, and now we're taking that 225 services, those 225 services, and putting them into categories of services. So as we go through this process, you'll be able to determine what services are related to economic development, as, as, as an example, in which departments. So we can find duplicate services and determine whether or not we must do this service. If so, is it a federal mandate, state mandate, local ordinance, or is it just tradition? So that's important because when we get to, when we get past the uh, policy portion of this budget, the things you, you and the mayor determine are the most important things that we do and have to allocate dollars. When we run out of dollars, dollars should be attached to those that we have to do those things are the highest priority. And that gives us a chance to look at things that we that we've done for whatever reason to determine whether or not we can afford to continue doing them or continue doing them that way. Okay, thank you, Mr. Marshall. If you actually look in your booklet, you can see the month by month review and it's in a bigger setting than the overall picture that you have there. So we'll just go to the next page and move on page five is where we are now. We're at the month of August. Okay, so at the same time, in the month of August, at the same time that we're submitting our year end reports from the previous year, we're also monitoring the current year's uh, fiscal plan budget and we're preparing for the outcoming years. So you've already now, in August 15th, you received the preliminary fourth quarter report. Um, so we are now refining our strategic plan to come up with where we're going for 14 and 15. So you can see the overlap between the different processes and the different times. 
Um, August, for, this will be the first time that we have really included Richmond Public Schools at, an early, at this early stage in the game. But you can see here, Richmond Public Schools, we're working with them and we're looking at bigger issues, one particular health care plans and if we're going to modify them. Um, in conjunction with Richmond Public Schools, anything else, any other big items we're looking at also. A focus area performance reports will be given. You have spoken about seeing the results from not just the financial data, but what's the re actual results of the focus area outcome. And so we will be presenting that. Now our plan this year is to do a mid-year report to you. And we'll do a mid-year and we'll do end of the year report. But you'll still get your financial reports quarterly. As we move toward our process for next year and refine it, in August, when you get the fourth quarter preliminary report, you will also be getting the year end performance reports. All right, let's let's move to September. Now, during the month of September, the departments head have completed their service prioritization, and we validate that with the mayor and city council and with the citizens. And we're doing that with the citizens by way of the citizen survey that you'll hear more about when Mr. Marshall speak in a little bit. At the same time, you should be focusing on your high-level priorities. And that will help us when we come together in October for a retreat and we begin to discuss. So at that time, we'd have the financial information, we'll have information from the citizen. You'll be able to articulate your priorities. And we'll put all this information together. And we're trying to make sure that the process is very smooth. Lou, you can attest to the fact that we have given granted access to your staff so they should be better able to assist you in navigating through the process. Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, this year we haven't, this, the plan you have before us is what we'd like to use as a standard plan going forward. This year as we're putting it together, we've missed some of the milestones, but we'll make them up in the next month, but this plan should work for us in the future going forward. You'll see also a major item or activity that's going on in the month of September is the legislative packages are being discussed. And we're continuing to refine the budget process. Those are the main things that are happening in September. So now we're in October and we've got various pieces of data and we are now retreating, we're having an opportunity to discuss that. Uh, after our meeting with you today, where you talk about your high-level priorities, when we hear that, um, we will be going back and refining our um, strategic goals as it relates to what you have identified for us. Another major component in the month of October is CIP. Uh, so we have CIP organizational meetings will be conducted both with schools and the city. Also, the mayor and council will meet and further look at priorities that you have discussed, further wash through those priorities. And the Richmond Public Schools will start their community meetings. They will start. The mayor will also now start conducting citizen budget forums. Um, and this process is validating what we got, the information we got from the survey. So if the survey said the sidewalks were very important, then we go in deeper and say, which sidewalks are you talking about? If we were talking about street paving, we'll be looking at what are the exact areas that you're talking about, the specific streets. So that's what will happen at those forums. And that's October. Excuse me, they begin in October, correct. You'll see them as we move through November. Is there a question? Question? You said we're going to do this no, no, I said they will begin in October. Oh, okay. They'll carry through the balance of, uh, I guess they carry through, through December, of, yeah, depending on months. when you are available to have the meeting in your district. Excellent. Councilman Jewell? Hi, Councilman Jewell. Gwen and Nate, everybody. Tell me something. Didn't know whether you could inject questions. Yeah, but. Uh, uh, you mentioned that we received the uh, preliminary fund balance in August. Fourth quarter report. Mm -hmm. Fourth quarter report. Uh, was there somehow, I thought I heard someone on the your committee uh, request um, 
after uh, the end of the fiscal year that we might receive uh, monthly uh, year-end balances, knowing how preliminary it is in August, um, that monthly those numbers are going to change perhaps dramatically. Uh, is that anywhere on the table? I, I wasn't aware of such a request, but I would strongly suggest we not do that. Because when you get a number in August, the changes that take place between August and November are basically accounting changes. And in November, you get the actual capital. We really can't make any logical decisions on the preliminary numbers. Because unless, they're, unless we're really, really sure of, the, of where they stand, and we're just not. We're within a couple million dollars at this point, and that can swing either way. Within a couple of million dollars at this point. Uh, of what we told you earlier, we're still within a couple million dollars of that. It goes up and down. So in November, you'll have the actual capital. We can't, admit, we'll, we would propose to, if we had a budget amendment, to propose that after the end of the year anyway. So we won't, we won't propose any, any budget amendments between now and December. So you'll have the final number if there's a budget amendment proposed. Most likely it will come around mid year. Uh, at the same time, we have the mid year report for the current. So you know where we are, we're 12, where we are, projected to be in 13, around, and we would be presenting the budget within two months after that. So you have a lot more information than you sometimes have had in the past. And the biggest driver of the change of, of that CAFRA would be incumbents? We've already made adjustments to incumbents. I guess the auditors could make further adjustments if they find that we misclassified something. Mm -hmm. I'll put it in the wrong year, I guess that's what it's saying. But we approve revenue um, in most of our, some of our revenue still that come in in August, July and August, we're still accruing that to the prior year. And some of the other expenditures, we're doing that too, if it's appropriate. And so that's why you're going to get the change. Okay. If we now look at the month of November, here, before now, we've been looking at all the data that we've been gathering. And that's been from the citizen survey, it's been from our service documentation, our service level priorities, legal mandates, services. Uh, it's been from preliminary forecasting data, it's been from the retreat and all of this. So now we're really ready to kick off the budget internal actions where smaller departments are actually developing their budgets and, and submitting them. Um, as it relates to the upcoming fiscal year, we will present the financial constraints that we have. But that was very clearly heard by you to say, make sure that schools and everybody understand what the data that you have is saying. And so we'll present that information not only to schools, but to our department in November. And we'll submit the five-year forecast data to you. So now the mayor and council can better talk to the public about what the real numbers look like and what gaps we may be seeing. November should give us that kind of data. Our non-departmental applications are due in this month in November. Um, and the CIP for the upcoming year is being approved and presented to the various council committees. May I ask a question in regards to non-departmental applications that are due? What is the process that we use to notify citizens of availability for applications as it relates to non department. Mr. Harris is coming up to explain that to you. Thank you, Ms. Juggins. Uh, traditionally, what we do, we look at the folks that receive money in the past, number one, to make sure they get the applications again. The second thing is that we traditionally have, a, for lack of better words, a dog and pony showing council chambers, where we go through what's available for funding what's available on the federal funds program as well. And that's advertised usually by way of the clerk's office or at least by way of the federal funds program. So that's open to the general public. I have also seen where they've advertised in the free press as well as the times it's passed to let folks know that the window has opened and come and see what you need to apply for. The other thing that I would ask uh, also is that as members of council or council staff or their liaison understand that there are some folks out there that are looking to apply for non-departmental funds, to just get me those names, uh, email addresses, their information as well, and we can make sure we email them or at least snail mail them an application as well. So, uh, like I said, the door is open, the window is open, we do the public session, and anything that you know out there that's available, you can get those names to me, we can make sure they get an application as well. Madam President, 
recommendation. Um, perhaps Al, um, Public Relations Office, Steve, uh, perhaps uh, someone, when the advertisement go out for the applications, if all the council members can get that application, that advertisement as well sent to us, that will help alert us and give us the detailed information about who's eligible, when the deadlines are, and those kinds of things as well. And that will help us to be able to notify those persons that may be interested to contact you and or make application. That'd be very, we can easily do that. Thank you, Mr. Harris. We will, if you have any questions about the month of November activities, you see council activities highlighted there. Let's move to the month of December. We're continuing our departmental service level budgets. Our larger departments now are submitting their budget. We're also getting uh, preliminary information about school's budget in December. Also, we'll take the opportunity to orientate the new council members and school board members in the appropriate years when that is appropriate, if it's an election year. In December, the governor announces his budget or its budget, so we're getting more fiscal information that's needed to bring our budget information in line. January. This is mainly um, internal budget activities that are going on, uh, but the Richmond Public School Superintendent will actually submit their budget to the school board. And although we have preliminary information that we received in November, now we're going to get better information because they're actually submitting the information to their board. So we get stronger data as we continue. February, pretty busy month. Here the mayor is going to check in with council again to talk about what the budget is actually looking like. All of the components that are coming together now, you get a very clear picture of the numbers and we're sharing. Mayor and CAO is sharing that information to council. We're identifying any gaps that need to be closed uh, due to lack of funding. We're also checking in once again with the citizens. So citizens forums will be taking place again. We're letting them know. Um, the school board meets in February to approve the school's budget. So that information will be very good. And the mid-year reports are gonna be submitted to you, both the performance and financial report. Let's move to March. March, the mayor continues the citizens' uh, budget forums. The proposed budget is being introduced, given to you, council. We're recommending that that takes place the third Thursday. And here's why. One, Richmond Public Schools will just have submitted their budget in February. That's very critical. Um, and the governor's budget is still being discussed. It's typically in March when the assembly final wrap, that finally wrap up the governor's budget and so we get additional information, and typically the information we get can impact us in some way. And plus, you would have been a part of the process all along. It should not be any surprises. You would have, because we've had quite a bit of conversation and dialogue, so we're recommending that. Uh, we will prepare a budget in brief, which is a summary of the, of the budget that you will be getting, so that it's easier for you to navigate. We can move to April now. You see a lot of activities for council. This is very key month for council because the budget work study sessions are going on, the public hearings are taking place, and you're submitting budget amendments, if there are any. And we actually begin the cycle of starting this plan again for the next year. April is when the citizen survey is basically, we try to start conducting that and that's in preparation for the next following year, so that's why I say we're starting now to plan for the next year. And so May is when the budget is approved by council, and again, we're gearing up for another budget cycle. And so we start back with June, where it all started in the beginning. Now we have heard that you ask that there are questions that have been presented each year during the budget process, and so we are looking at those questions to make sure we address them during the process so that hopefully we'll have fewer questions at the end. 
That is our process. Are there any questions? Any addition, comments, modification? Yes, Mr. Joel? Yes. Did I miss it or is there a date by which um, CBG funds uh, should be included here? We did not highlight that here, Ray, but do you have that information? I don't have that directly. We can make sure that we do have the exact dates, but traditionally they would do at least two weeks before the regular budget was due. But as you recall, last year when we adopted the budget, we did everything two weeks earlier for two reasons. Number one, the school's budget being adopted, and also it was in cycle with the federal funds being adopted. But we'll make sure we include anything that we can get from that. I'd like to comment in regards to the children's choice fund. Two things. We recognize that the adopted budget for CDG, the federal funds, um, there's a deadline that has to be met, but there's also an application process. And I'm, I, when I asked about the non departmental, I was wondering if the application process for those that are interested in federal funds take place at that same time. I know it usually takes place about that time of the year, but I think she's researching. Okay. If I may, we did try to work together at the same time, same time frame with the general fund application as well as the federal application. Um, but there may be some timing differences uh, that we want to make sure, number one, we abide by the federal process, obviously, number one. And secondary to that, we want to make sure we do give the citizens and the groups enough time for the general fund dollars. But we do try to keep those as close together, but not the same dates as possible. <coughs> and uh, again, we work with them, the federal folks over in uh, economic development make sure we have the right dates. And they are actively involved in the actual application itself because those dates are also a part of the application. Yes, yeah, secondly, uh, rates. Uh, on a scale of one to five, five being excellent, uh, how do you feel that we're doing with identifying and pursuing grant dollars? I don't even know where the grant department is, but where the grant department is. Is it? Yeah. Of course, we, we're always looking at, at grants that we have and seeing if we can continue them, but we also always look to see if there are additional uh, grant dollars that we're able to obtain. So you ask on the scale of 1 to 10, is that what you're saying? 1 to 5, okay, that's, that's better. <laughs> I'd like to also add, we are a member of a consortium known as eCivis, and uh, the budget office, by way of the grants coordinator, we're always looking at eCivis, and they also send out email blasts to the grants that are available. For those that are directly related to other departments, such as maybe a record parks or a public works department, we forward those to those departments and try to follow up as often as we can to make sure they are looking at those, and if it is available for us to apply to do so. Some of the other things that we must consider is if there are matching funds that are required that might be a little bit more strenuous than the city is able to come up with as to whether we really should go after some of these things. But we look at as much as we can from that standpoint and we also depend upon a lot of times the departments that come to us and let us know where they may have heard some grants were available and we would go do the research for them as well. And I don't want to just limit it to the departments. Obviously, if the administration or if by way of council there are some things that need to be looked at, we'd be more than happy to go through and research and see what's available and see what, uh, what things we can really match up with. And the data from eCivis is both public and private grant? Uh, it is a lot of governmental grants. There's also been some talk about maybe looking for other types of grants that are out there, such as human services grants. But I think we need to either find out where we can get the, the hook into those because it would be very preferable if we had a book that we could get email flash from those other side areas as well, for lack of better words. So there may be uh, IT grants out there that we may not be on the eCivis radar, but someone else may have those listservs that we can also be a part of. Council, can I make a suggestion? We have a grant coordinator. It might be good to have Chris and his staff person come to a council briefing or work session talk to you about the process that they employ. They're also grant writers and other departments are going to talk to you about how the entire thing works. You can look at the grants that we bring into and make assessments whether or not we 
are committed to the benchmarks. Uh, I, I've, I've heard that we are missing deadlines. I've heard that we're leaving dollars on the table. I don't know from squat how true it is. So that's the reason I'm asking you if you would give me a grant. Just give me a grant. I haven't heard a number yet. Because <laughs> what I'd like to do is bring them all in and talk to them rather than just making up a number. I, I don't have a sense of it. So let us get the information and come back to you. Thank you. Start the whole picture back up again yeah. and then let us know there. Can I? Yes, in August. Uh, August? Yes. Okay. We'll be looking at uh, health care plans. And I know that uh, we're in an interesting place as a commonwealth. And after November 6th, we may have some op more options. I don't know. But given where we are right now, uh, what we at least mentioned in the past is taking a look at the possibility. We're looking at schools and city, but our RHA, our BHA, our AA, in terms of the possibility of uh, working collaboratively to increase volume, maybe looking at their folks coming as under the same umbrella. And so, not sure if we've already vetted that. Again, I know it's a little squishy because we're in a holding pattern with the Commonwealth until after election, but still. Some analysis has already been done with our, through our HR department. They've been looking at it. There are a lot of factors to consider. Uh, the uses rate in other entities and how that would impact us and whether or not it would be beneficial to merge with plans. And so some of that has been done and we'll continue to do that. So will we make a, so we will decide uh, whether or not we're going to merge with any of those entities, and there may be some others that I don't have on the list yet as a part of this budget process. If that is something that would be mutually beneficial, uh, is that where we are? Actually, right there, what we were doing was just looking at our plans, but that's the opportunity that will be when we should do it if right. we are going to look at merging with any other entity. I know we've had a conversation with the Hamlet's Authority mm -hmm. about merging with them. We've also had a recent conversation, had some analysis that's been done of the Housing Authority. I don't remember what, what the status of RBHA is, but we, we will look at all three. Okay. Uh, as I recall, when we looked at the Hamlet's Authority, it actually would have been more expensive. And I can't remember why, but okay. we can get that analysis for you. Okay. I think the housing, too, when it was based on their usage. Of, of and that may be, I just didn't want to miss the opportunity to do due diligence where there might be, uh, you know, a situation that we could Suppose save. we just send to you the results of our analysis, and we can do that. There has, been, there has been analysis done on at least two of those entities, and we should be able to get that to you pretty quickly. Okay. And then I just, in terms of health care reform in the Commonwealth, I'm assuming we'll play out scenarios in terms of implications for us. We met in August with our yes. health care broker. Okay, so, so we're, we're in, in contact with They gave us an overview of what some of the changes they're seeing at this time uh, and what they think the impact is. A lot of it's going to depend on what happens in November. And so we're, we're watching it, though. Yeah. We're following it. We met jointly with schools. We have the same uh, health care advisor, so they made a report to both of us. So we have a sense of what the impact is on both entities. What we're trying to do now is focus on the things we can control. We can control wellness. So we lost our wellness uh, coordinator to HDL. We paid her a lot more than we paid her. So we just hired a new one. She came in about two weeks ago, and schools has one. So we're trying to focus on that. One of the things we made proposing this year is that we actually have a uh, relationship with either MCV or a local doctor here at City Hall or very close to City Hall so that our employees can get uh, more primary care. Well, uh, Chesterfield found that that helped them bring their costs down tremendously by having uh, doctors right there. And there's a wellness piece in at least proposed, depending on what happens after November 6th, 
within health care reform that would allow the possibility for reimbursement of those kind of activities. I don't know if that one falls right in there, but for wellness <coughs> programming. Uh, I'm sure that's part of the analysis that yeah. uh, Ms. Hayes is doing. Right. Um, one of the uh, challenges that we faced last year with the budget, specifically as it relates to fund funding for the retirement fund, and also as it relates to the schools with most of their time just in the state. Um, last year, I think we decided that we were going to do uh, some type of analysis of how we looked at our retirement fund and how a long-range strategy of how we address that. Um, I'm concerned as to whether or not we are anticipating a significant uh, challenge as it relates to a gap and uh, increase uh, contribution that has to be made as it relates to the retirement fund. And this other question I wanted to ask is, I understand you to say that some of the smaller departments are already working on their budgets. Um, I think that takes place in December, the month of December. Okay. I, the question that I want to ask is, <coughs> November. Where where are we starting with that budget? Do we start with a baseline of where we currently are with every department, uh, their budgets, or are there other uh, objectives that are driving us as it relates to where our departments are starting with their with putting their budgets together? So they're two separate, two different questions. So so we're starting with some sound uh, fundamental information citizen survey, um, looking at an inventory of our services. I think we said in November we will have the forecast data. We'll be able to see what the numbers are looking like. That's when we'll give budget directions as to whether or not it's status quo or exactly how and what we should be doing, what our departments need to focus on as they develop their budget. Uh, in a moment, when I talk to you about the citizen survey, I'm going to also talk to you about the notion of, of how we set priorities, uh, how we prioritize objectives with the council. So what we're hoping to have happen this year is that we start with a policy budget. There's one of the things that are important to move in the city ahead that we all agree on. How do we rank those things? And what are the initiatives that will get us to the, to the objectives with measurements? And what are the dollars that it takes to support those things? So we'll focus on the top priorities first. Once those things are satisfied, then, and, and the things that are mandated, what's left, we'll, we'll look at the departments and, and try to rank those. So it's, this is not a one-year process, but I think this, this year, we, we're clear, we're much clearer on the priorities and the priority initiatives and the measurements of those things. I hope, hopefully that answers your question. If it doesn't, in a moment, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Hopefully that will be, make it more clear. Well, we don't start with a zero-based budget, but that's what you're asking. No, we do not. We do not. Yes, in line with Ms. Newton's question, uh, we often talk about regional cooperation. And uh, uh, I just know from being you know, the long two that people don't tend to cooperate around merely the idea of cooperation. Have we ever pitched to uh, county neighbors uh, the prospect of joining forces, getting under one umbrella, which is health insurance? Yes. We talked to both Chesterfield and Henrico uh, last year and your boards. Henrico has a self-funded plan like we do. Chesterfield does not. Uh, their, their plans are much more, much more mature than ours. They've had wellness plans in place for a long time. time. So it's not, it's not attractive to them yet for us to join with them because we are bringing their costs up at this, at this point until we get our wellness program working properly. But I didn't want to start there. I appreciate that. Uh, but that MCB is about as big you know, with regard to employee as uh, uh, BCU, I mean. And as, as any of these municipalities. Uh, and then there's the city of Petersburg, who 
I'm talking with council members and the mayor down there who are looking for ways that we can do cooperative things together. Um, and so I don't want to overlook the prospect of Petersburg just 20 minutes down the road. Um, we have not talked to Petersburg. We have talked to Dr. Rob about <coughs> DCU, but it was more in terms of them providing services to us you know, as, a, as a preferred provider. Don't bring our costs down there. Do not talk about being in the same health plan. Yeah, they got health plans too that conceivably could be compatible. We explore them. We will explore them. Thank you, sir. Okay. okay. Thank you. Again. Just a follow up, um, not that you have to give me the answer, but I don't want to leave the retirement piece off for the table. Do so. uh, you want to talk about the retirement? Okay. We, we have some information about the retirement that we can share with you. Right. That's what it would be. Today? Uh, one, uh, one more question. Uh, my question was that we and a lot of the gap that we recognize with the budget this year was directly relates to retirement, the retirement fund. And we have some of those same challenges on the city side as we have on the school side. And we had previously talked about putting together a long range strategy as to how we would increase the level of funding. Um, I assume that's something that's in progress and um, that we should anticipate that this year, based on where we are with the funding of our retirement account, that we should expect to put a larger lump sum on uh, Ms. Robertson, the retirement system itself has a long-range plan of how to get our funding status higher and I know they presented to you in the last several months about that. They'll come back periodically. But their, their board is comfortable that over time we will get to a better funding status where we want to be. I can't off the top of my head give you the numbers, but it is a, a very workmanlike plan. In addition, when the mayor um, had his <coughs> panel of um, financial experts look at our retirement system, they came up with several recommendations and Joya Hayes, who's the Director of Human Resources, is working with me through the, working through those recommendations about ways we can modify our plan, um, both in terms of some potential decreases for future employees, as well as some adjustments to match the new form of government and the terms of our elected officials. So that will be coming in the next several weeks. And that also will help control costs over a longer range period. The presentation was yeah. so we had, we had, I believe it was mentioned before council. I think that's right. It was, I believe it was maybe six months ago. Yeah, it could have been six months ago. But it's a, I, I know it's a report that they're happy to give you. The report came to us from the mayor's commission that looked at the time So that was from Bob Blue and uh, Ron Tillett, the chairman of the retirement board, mm -hmm. both came to council. That's exactly right. So it probably was six, maybe even eight months. Yeah. I, but in the next few months, we'll bring some of those proposed changes to, in the next few weeks, actually, bring some of those proposed changes to council. One of the things you may remember from their report, though, is the way the retirement board has set our plan payments is that within eight years we would be at 80 percent which is a national which is a, an acceptable standard so we are, we are budgeting as though well budget the way that the retirement board suggested we do we're paying what they recommend and their recommendation assumes a low performance with respect to their investments even though their, their investments have performed much better is that contribution increasing over our contribution is significantly it has increased. I know, but we had anticipated over that period of time. No, I believe, I have to go back to the curve. I don't really remember, but we'll present that as part of the budget process. Right. Is that what they do? And they don't do their, they, the retirement board does their actuarial, actuarial analysis at the end of the, of the calendar, so we won't get that information until probably January. January, February. 
Well, on the retirement discussion, they follow our budget cycle, and we should be getting a report from the June 30th uh, year-end discussion. Uh, I did have the honor of, of speaking to Mr. Langley before he left town. And, uh, he indicated that this year was not a good year in comparison to the year before. But of course, yeah, well, and of course, that's why he explained the fact that even though they had a very high number the year before, they always average it out because they know that it's going to fluctuate. And so, but in this year, it, it went down. Um, and I think we're going to have to get a number from them sooner than later because I have a feeling that budget number that's, that y'all are working with right now may need to be modified to reflect what occurred. Because, I mean, it was roughly $43 million was put into the budget. And, uh, and I think I have a, uh, a feeling that that number is going to increase more than three or four million that I think we had talked about allocating in this upcoming year budget. So that's, you know, that's something we are really going to have to focus on. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to ask about, and again, I appreciate the laying out of the document, but I will say that um, getting the budget in the third Thursday of March um, is not an, an acceptable time frame for me. Um, I think it needs to be pushed back to where it is, where it was this past year. Uh, we need, we need to, in my humble opinion, we need March and April to get get our work done because May we have we normally try to have the budget passed at the first meeting of May, which is the second second Monday of the month, with a fallback position of going to another meeting if if necessary. Uh, so I think you have to think about it in that light. So I would suggest that you look at pushing it back uh, to early May. And I can't remember. I think early it was March. like first or second. What date was it? It was somewhere in that first week. I just don't remember off the top of my, my hand. And, and what that does is it gives committees at least two opportunities to have dialogue with the, about it. Now, I hear what you're saying about us having dialogue along the way, but um, until I see the object codes, it's kind of hard to, to digest the budget in its entirety. I mean, it's good to have the directions that, you know, the dialogue about where we're going and what we're trying to do, and I appreciate that. Uh, it makes it easier from a thousand, hundred thousand foot level, but when you start dialing down to the one foot boots on the ground marching discussions, uh, it, it takes time to go through that information. As a councilman, it does for me. And I hear what you're saying, Mr. Cameron, and I don't disagree with that. But I think as we move forward today and maybe in the next couple of weeks, one, something that we have talked about, and I hope we get time to discuss it today, is our process and how we're going to change our process soon. Um, I'm not going to get into it now, but that's going to be part of the ongoing when we get it and we don't get it. What date suits us? is how our process is going. Madam President, yes, sir. I've got one last question. I plan on that. Uh, and I may have missed it, uh, but have we talked at all about uh, economic projections? Have we got any? You're good in November. But when we talked about the budget process starting and us meeting with council, that's when the economic projections were, were presented. We have on board an economist? The economist will start on the 15th. Thank you.